Hi, and welcome to the first video that's a chapter one summary for the Bio 1322 nutrition course. I'm your uh, professor, Professor Alejandro Enriquez. Uh, I'm going to be shooting a short summary for each chapter. It's not a full lecture. Your book has all the material you'll need, but uh, to help you organize your studying and reading process, I decided to try and shoot these to help you get started. Um, so I'm going to try and shoot one of these for each chapter, and if you have any material that you're really stuck on, I can always shoot a uh, short video to try and help further explain anything that you have problems with. Uh, so this is an overview of the material that's in chapter one. Uh, I've kind of broke it down into five subjects uh, and the first one is just kind of selling the class to you why this is, material is important. So we're going to look at that first. Um, ultimately nutrition and health are closely related because uh, there's the old expression you are what you eat. That is literally true. If you think about this you were born as a baby somewhere between, I don't know, three and ten pounds, depending on a lot of things. Uh, but all the current weight that you have above that weight has been from the food that you've eaten. So uh, the food that we eat literally becomes the parts of your body. And so in order to reach a full adult size and a full adult bone mass and muscle mass and skin mass and everything, you need to have a certain amount of different materials to put into your body. Um, and if you're, what you're eating is not uh, giving you all the materials you need to build a body, your body's not going to be in good health. Um, the key concept that we take away from this first part of chapter one is that the most important thing for nutrition is to result in wellness. And Wellness is just kind of a word that overall describes how healthy you are. It's actually a kind of a, a stripped down idea of what in, in uh, more uh, rigorous biology classes we call homeostasis, which is the, uh, the amount of balance of the, the balance of keeping an internal environment uh, stable inside your body. And so for example, homeostasis can include keeping your body the right temperature and Non nutrition is not normally linked closely to keeping the right body temperature. I mean, we just, you know, as long as unless you're starving to death, you normally have enough calories to burn to keep yourself warm and enough water to cool yourself off. We are going to see that that material later in chapter 10 um, or 11. But more importantly, over the long haul, over the periods of months and years of choosing what to eat, and, and once you stop getting fed by your parents, uh, choosing the right food is really important to maintain homeostasis overall of all of your organs. Um, and we're gonna, actually going to see in some of the later chapters which nutrients are good for which organs in, in what way. Um, but in general, if you're not getting enough nutrients or if you're getting too much of something that has a toxic level in it, you end up with what are called chronic diseases, which are diseases that come on slowly over time and uh, you know are created and exacerbated by um, not having enough nutrition. All right so the next thing up is the six types of nutrients. Uh, the first three of these nutrients on the list are all what are called macromolecules um, which means they make very large chains of molecules um, hundreds or thousands or even millions of atoms all bonded together. Uh, so that's carbohydrates, uh, fats and oils, and proteins. These first three provide energy to our body. They provide a lot of other things as well. Uh, so for example, carbohydrates also um, include fiber, which is good for your uh, digestive system, um, which we're going to see why. Fats and oils are also, in addition to being used for, en for energy, are also used for make phospholipids and used for make bile salts. And uh, proteins are very important not only for energy, but to build create the building blocks of our things that are in our, our, our cells. The uh, other three um, nutrients are not energy providing, but they're very important. Um, vitamins and minerals, um, there's not one chapter, there's not one chapter for vitamins and one for minerals. Um, they are separate chap they're, there's not separate chapters. Instead, we, we break the vitamins and minerals up into, uh, in this, in our book, into uh, which are valuable for are um, which are which of them are valuable for our, our bones, uh, which are valuable for our water balance and so forth, and then water itself is the last of the six nutrients. And of course, water does not have any calories in it either. All you have to do is look at a water bottle and see that it has zero calories. Um, but uh, but water is still really important for maintaining uh, all kinds of important things about your about your health. 
So uh, next up, measuring nutrients. This is all material that's, this is actually a graph right out of your book. Um, you want to make sure you know all of these because they're going to come up over and over throughout the course of the, the class. Uh, for typical nutrients, the EAR is the estimated average requirement. That's how much of a nutrient that you need on average on a given day. Uh, so for example, um, but that's over, that's calculated over the entirety of the population. So the green um, bell curve is how, for, let's pick a nutrient. So for example, like vitamin D, let's just use vitamin D as an example. Uh, I don't know what the actual EAR is for vitamin D, but uh, it's some number, it's some, you know, probably thousands, uh, hundreds of milligrams a day or something. Um, if you are getting the ER, EAR, the estimated average requirement, that is only enough for 50% of the population. So if you're larger than average or more active than average or uh, any a number of other things that might cause you to need more, uh, you may not be getting enough. Um, the RDA is a recommended dietary allowance, which is how much 98% of the population would normally need. Uh, so if you're getting the RDA, and again, that's uh, an average. Uh, for that's that's 97, 98 of the population. So you might have a special circumstance where you might need more than the RDA. Um, but for for most people, if you look and you're seeing, oh, I'm getting the RDA, the recommended data allowance, you should be good. The UL or upper tolerable uh, tolerable upper intake level is how much you can have before it starts being toxic. Some things have outrageously high ULs. Um, so, um, but but it is possible to have it. So, for example, I don't know what vitamin C's UL is. I'm sure it's outrageous. I'm sure it's not really possible to have a toxic toxic amount of vitamin C unless you are, uh, you know, really like like you're literally just crushing and snorting those vitamin C pills one after the next. I mean, you'd have to take in an enormous amount. But on the other hand. Some things actually have a UL, which you do have to be aware of, like the fat-soluble vitamins, like vitamin A. You actually can have vitamin A toxicity. That is a thing that, that very occasionally does happen to people. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and then if the, the EAR and the RDA are not known, if they're not able to be calculated, they're normally estimated instead um, with the AI, the adequate intake level. Uh, so that's if you... If you don't have an RDA or an EAR, then the adequate intake is, is considered enough for, for people. So we don't always have all the information you would you would think we have. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the last part of chapter one, which is the scientific method and how that applies to nutrition. So the scientific method is uh, an ongoing process. It's We're still actually still to this day learning new things about nutrition. And, um, and one of the things that comes out of the scientific method is it's an ongoing process of tr testing your ideas, refining your ideas. You, if, you're, if your idea is, is valid, you use that idea to then build an even better, more specific version of the idea. And eventually, if you keep doing that over and over, you get to a theory. The problem is that you'll see that in nutrition, more so than any other science, there's not a lot of established, settled, perfect knowledge because uh, in order to really get these ideas right, like in order to really show that these things are, are really true, you need uh, data. The more variables you have, the more data you need. And since there's a lot of different nutrients that are in food uh, and you need a larger population, but when you have a larger population of, of individuals, humans, you start having people from different ethnic groups who may have different dietary needs because they have different enzymes in their body. And we're going to see a little more about how all this goes down in chapter three. But basically the upshot is that there's a lot of um, averaging that happens. And so we're still going through the process right now. Not me, obviously not me because I'm just teaching you guys, but there are actual nutrition scientists who are uh, you know, recording what people eat, measuring their health overall, trying to assess uh, what the different foods that we eat, what their effects is, effects are on our body. And the last part of chapter one is really important because it talks about, uh, you know, the evaluating information. So, for example, if you Google right now, like, is protein and an autocomplete good and is protein bad? And, like, what are the pros and Basically, what you really ask is what are the pros and cons to eating a lot of protein. But what you're going to find is a lot of different information out there and a lot of it's conflicting. There's a lot of reasons for that. One of the major reasons is that 
homeostasis is all about moderation. It's all about balance. It's all about having the right amount of things. But it's hard to sell moderation. It's hard to sell homeostasis. It's hard to sell that. Like, it's much easier for a company to be like, protein is great. Buy a lot of protein. Like, they buy our giant protein pack and it'll make you healthy. Like, there's no place in capitalism for moderation, if that makes sense. So that means that, that you can't really rely very much on any studies that are put on by specific companies that are testing their own product. Now, of course, we can test products for safety, right? The FDA is actually a thing. What you'll see is the FDA and USDA. Those are actual government organizations. Those are considered more reliable because they don't have a profit motive. Their, their only motive is reaching the truth and you know collecting their paycheck for it. It's not like trying to actually... Uh, well, of course, if, if you have government corruption come into it, there's actually an interesting case studies uh, in the chapter, the end of the chapter about um, like the Coca-Cola company trying to get involved with uh, studies about sugar and actually suppressing information about sugar that that shows that sugar is unhealthy. Um, and so, you know, the, if that the U.S. is thus far not as corrupt as it could be. So, so far, the government organizations are still considered more reliable for putting out information about what is and isn't healthy and what is and isn't safe. The other thing that's also um, on a more personal level, uh, if you're talking about uh, an expert in the field trying to get information from them about what I should be eating, what I shouldn't be eating, uh, you're going to want to talk to a registered dietitian because a dietitian is a position that's an actual type of health professional, just like a registered nurse or a doctor or a physician assistant. Those are all specific, you know, a pharmacist, pharmacist tech. Those are all specific positions that have specific requirements. So dietitian is actually a position. Now, uh, there is also such thing as nutritionist, but a nutritionist is just someone who calls himself a nutritionist. So I can actually can be a nutritionist if I decide to call myself one. In fact, right now I am a nutritionist, so I'll answer all your information about uh, nutrition. But see, that is meaningless to just say, oh, I know all this stuff. Um, it's uh, And so what you'll see is that people out there make a lot of money off of other people by... Uh, you know, but with misinformation, with uh, not having the right kind of information out there, or having enough of it, so you're gonna have to have a lot of suspicion when you're going through um, uh, during do, do, more than any other field. Nutrition uh, has a lot of conflicting information. It just has a lot of information. Period, because there's a lot of parts of our body, and every one of them is uh, you know needs certain nutrients to work properly. But those same nutrients can cause problems in other parts of the body. The thing is that um, what you're going to see as you go through this course that my specialty when I teach is actually anatomy and physiology. I'm not, a, I don't, I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian. I'm a physiologist. I teach and study the human body and how it all works together. So I enjoy teaching nutrition because I come at it from a very physiological perspective. Well, this vitamin is good for this part of the body and why. Um, what you're going to see is that this course is going to be really, there's a lot. It's, you know, it's a pretty rigorous course because we're really getting down to what's so important about everything, um, and the different things we're putting into our body. Um, one last thing, comment up the top on wellness. Um, people often want to be thin because they think that's healthy. And that's not always true. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see from, from the camera, I mean, I'm, moderate thickness I'm not too too thin or too uh, fat I guess you could say um, if I just ate McDonald's every day for a year I guarantee I'll gain a lot of weight I know because every time I get really busy eat a lot of junk food I gain a lot of weight we then turn around and make the association that everyone who is what we think of as overweight is unhealthy because they're eating a lot of McDonald's that's not necessarily true there's lots of people who eat right who exercise a lot and they naturally carry a lot of weight Really better measurements for wellness is your lifespan, your heart rate, your blood pressure. Those are all things you can't see just by looking at someone. And, con and, and conversely, there's a lot of people who are uh, what we consider to be skinny. And they're not healthy at all. They're very, their arteries are clogged. Their liver is failing, but they're skinny. And so we look at them and say, oh, man, that's a healthy person. It's absolutely not. Um, and a lot of uh, people who call themselves nutritionists have buy into this bias. Like a lot of people who go pay money to talk to a nutritionist, oh, I need help losing weight. Well, do you really? Are you really, you know, are you really unhealthy? If you can run a mile and, you know, and if you've got, you know, decent, like, you know, you've got good blood pressure, your liver's working fine, your kidneys are working fine, 
you don't need to lose weight. I mean, it's not, you're not, and yes, obesity is comorbid with a lot of things like diabetes and, and heart disease and so forth. Absolutely, that's true. But if your heart and liver and lungs and kidneys are working great, you're healthy. That's ultimately what it comes down to. And so uh, there's a lot of bias in nutrition information. There's a lot of fat phobic bias. A lot of people saying, hey, you know, oh, you know, just uh, if you just eat a salad, you know, just eat a salad, like as if it was a matter, matter of self control, which of course it is for some people. But by and large, a lot of you know people who are trying to lose weight are not necessarily trying to do it for the right reasons. They, they want to be healthy, but they may not even be unhealthy in their current state. So as we go through this course, we're going to challenge a lot of preconceived notions that everyone has about health and wellness and food and weight. So get ready for a fun ride. Chapter 1 material is due by first Sunday night. Thanks, guys.